Hey there, this is Retro Marky. Now continuing on with the BBC Micro, I've got a couple of things to show you today. I've been working hard over the weekend and um, I've also got a package from Retro Clinic that um, I'm going to be using and showing you a bit later. Talking of Retro Clinic, I've got a few bits and bobs from Mark there now. I've got the speech chips over there. I have got the MOS selector on my BBC Master and also the uh, Raspberry Pi CoPro for my BBC Master to fill it internally and the package I've got today which I'm going to show you in a bit but before we do that um, I've got a few things I want to do so let's go and uh, do that now so I powered on my beep and in fact this is not the easiest thing to see but I don't know if you can recall from a previous video but I used to have a quite large ROM board over here uh, to add sideways ROM and sideways RAM and I found a much better solution for that which is not from Retro Clinic but um, I'll put a link down below um, this was just under £40 but um, it's a modern solution that fits in very nicely with the battery backup and gives um, 16 different ROMs or sideways RAMs so what I thought I'd do is give you a quick demonstration now on the B we've got um, a few spare sockets here and the operating system I've put into the first slot or I think I just left it there uh, on the right here I've got the Watford DS DFS um, which goes with the Watford DFS board over there now the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is there's a jumper on here which can select between using all 16 internally or using 14 and the two slots which are 14 and 15 um, on the board itself. Now the reason for that is what you can do is put a ROM into slot 15 or 14 and then move it over to this device and free up those slots if you want to. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick demonstration of sideways ROMs and kind of how it works. So it looks like I need to turn off my coprocessor. My B's been a bit funny the last few weeks. Not funny ha ha, but funny pain in the backside. What for DFS? Here and no coprocessor. So um, if I do shift and break, I'd say shift, yeah, shift and break, we could load my real floppy drive. I've actually got a, a Turbo MMC card in there. So I think what I'm going to do is move the jumper across. Now, you can do this when it's switched on, because you can move the jumper and then press break, and you can see it's now reverted to the other ROMs that fall next. Uh, in the order because um, there are priorities and things like that. In fact if I do star ROMs I can show you what's on here. So 0 and 1 at the moment are free. I've got Rocket Raid, uh, DFS A3 which is for the MMC, Basic Advanced Disk Toolkit, Snapper, Basic Utility, Xmon 2 which is a fantastic machine code monitor. And uh, not sure what that one is at the moment. I have to check. And Basic of course. Now the good thing is um, it comes with BASIC actually on the board, so you don't actually need to have the BASIC ROM in the machine anymore, which is quite nice. Um, I don't think you even need a DFS, but I do like to have my Watford DFS for using real floppy drives. Uh, and then Toolkit Plus, and then some empty slots here. So here we are without the CoPro on, and you can see here, what I've actually done is loaded some real original ROMs and then copied them using this piece of software, just using the save function, um, onto a virtual black disk on the SD card, which is actually really nice. What we can do then um, is load something up for you, to show you how this works. Um, so obviously we want something we haven't got here, for example, we could put the advanced control panel which I've shown you in a previous video so we'll load that into slot D ah, I don't think it likes it there, let me just try advanced control panel in slot 0 actually yeah, it hasn't read it very well but that should be working now so for now go start um, basically you can see here advanced control panel I do so if you do a help on any ROM, 
sideways roll, you can see what it, what uh, its functions are, although not in this case. And there's the advanced control panel, which is a nice little interface for well configuring ROMs and the filing system, all sorts of things that. Okay. This is a GoTech B16. Comes with one times customized black GoTech floppy emulator, uh, 35 pin IDC data cable, the power supply which you're going to need because it'll be powered by the B bit itself. Uh, that'll be through the, I can't remember where it is now, yeah, under there somewhere. 16 gig USB stick and instructions. So, as always, the quality is so good from uh, this chap. There was a guy selling a cheaper one for £10 cheaper. But I thought, you know, I'd rather give the money to Mark. I know his quality is top-notch. And everything's nicely in plastic. I'm not sure what that is. I'll have a look at that in a minute. And lots of lovely foam as well. Turn off the bead for now. And unboxing is not really my thing, but yep, yeah, we're we'll using that box actually. Okie dokie. Nicely wrapped anti static bag for protection. And there we go. So I do have a couple of GoTex uh, that I've used on the Commodore PC, for example. Uh, and I did think about maybe using one of them for the B, but. Um, you know, I needed, I kind of need those other two, and this one has got a couple of mods that I haven't got round to on the other ones. So it's got the lovely little OLED screen, um, and this, oh, that's nice, little selector with a push button. Uh, it's also got rubber feet, yeah, which keeps it nice and firm on there. Obviously, you need a special conversion for the Beeb power. Uh, output the external uh, and obviously the data cable here and the jumpers will be set that must be the USB stick I think and hopefully I'm maybe it's a nice small one I don't like big USB sticking out my GoTex but you know who does at the end of the day first world problems <laughs> here's the stick so what we'll do, actually, I'll just cut camera and we'll power it on once I've finished trying to get this plastic thing off. Because uh, more fingers and, no, thumbs and toes and, I don't know. I've got sausage fingers. So there we go, there's the device itself. Um, when you power on, you get this lovely little display. It's absolutely tiny, but it's perfectly readable. It makes a huge difference when you've got, what, 999 discs on here. Um, Mark's done a great job as well. I've just been flicking through tons of games and utilities and ROMs and magazine discs and you name it. Um, now what I love about it is if we, um, so what you do is you press it to either put the disc in, you can see it's a Track 79 Elite disc, or you can press it again to eject. So we'll put it in and because I'm using Watford DFS, Shift break. Oh no. There we go. You get a lovely little light and a loading sound as well, like a real floppy disk. That's really, really nice. Um, I think I'm going to have to change this for a tiny little black one I've got just to keep it really tidy, but I'm totally blown away with this. So, he's also put all four versions of Elite, including the CoPros. Now, I was going to mention, because you may or may not remember that I've got an SD card Turbo MMC in this particular machine, and you might be wondering why would I want to get one of these. Well, I didn't before, but I started messing around recently with um, the coprocessors and the Raspberry Pi, and I really wanted to show you BBC Micro, um, Z80 CoPro and some CPM. So this is the reason why I got one of these because um, now I did find using the card uh, and the Turbo MMC card is fine but the disk images can only be 200k SSD 
and virtually everything on CPM is uh, 400k and um, it won't work on the Turbo MMC uh, or any similar I think uh, what I'm going to do I think is just show you what I did manage to do on the Turbo MMC and then what we can do with this so what I'm going to do first is turn on uh, the coprocessor which is 4 for the Z80 and there we go and now what I've just checked which is really nice is you can use this device with the card reader as well so you've pretty much got almost like a dual card system uh, now what we can do is So at the moment we're still using the BBC operating system even though we're connected to the Z80 you can still use normal commands and you can still access the card which is nice uh, So what I'm looking for is Acorn CPM So we can put a disk in 307 Ah, oh, interesting, it's gone to uh, it's defaulted to the GoTech. So I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. That's not going to work. I don't think. Okie dokie. So disk into 307. This would be a CPN. Oops, disk. CPM disk. There we go. Now we do directory. It's a bit like DOS using this. Uh, result 1. And we're in CPM now. Woohoo! Um, there seems to be a lot of text adventures on CPM. You're not going to get. Um, I don't think you're going to get. Uh, I don't think it will run Crisis, but um, I am. There's a lot of free CPM software. I'm really get quite excited to delve around. But like I said, this is the only disk I actually find that was uh, less than 200k and would work with the MMC. Now going back to the GoTech, which I'll do in a second, um, this should mean I can get a bunch of CPM software and, um, and run pretty much all of it, or any of it that's compatible. Now what I'd like to do, I think, is put the GoTech back in because apparently there is some CPM built into Mark's card, which is uh, really was the deal breaker for me. I thought, wow, I don't even have to faff around with all that nonsense, configuring and finding software. So we'll try that next, and then in this video. So what else have we got? BBC, oh, BBC Basic. It's like Graph Generators, Memo, 6502Z80 BBC. Uh, is this generated? I don't know what that does. Let's try prepare, I wonder what that is. Just to show you it's all working. Really nice how you can see the tracks actually uh, moving on here. Preparing program disks. Program disks are working copies of the software you get in your Z80 pack. This is stored on seven disks. You should use these seven masters only to make your working copies. There are 12 items on each of the seven disks. You can choose to make as many or few as you like. The prepare program helps you make the disk for these 12 items. Bloody blah, blah. You need to put a blank disk in. There is actually a blank CPM disk on there, which is a nice little touch. It's those kind of details I love about people like Mark. Do, do, do. Right, okay. Oh! Utilities and graphics, memo, file, grass, basic, COBOL, nucleus, 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 accountant, accountant, start of day. You should make a copy of the utilities. And when my screen started, you can you see that start jerking over? That's not happened before. Well, I haven't really delved into CPM this much before, but hmm, don't know if that's TV or the extra power draw. That no, shouldn't be much power from a GoTech, surely. Looks like it's the Beeb itself having problems with that. Or maybe the TV with the 80 columns. Anyway, um, I don't know. What's 
utilities and graphics. Ah, to make this program disk, put a blank disk in drive B. Oh, I don't have a drive B, but we'll try CPM blank. Although, do I want to copy over that? I probably want to make a few copies of that, actually. So let's not do that. <laughs> Go back to CPM, yes. Okay, and because that's a blank disk, yeah, it's not going to be very happy. We'd have to put in... So just have a look, ah, while we're here, let's have a look at CPM disk 2 for completion's sake. Okay. Which I mean, not a system disk. Ah, of course, I need to put in disk. Okay, so CPM 1 again. Boot that. And now I'll go to CPM disk 2 directory. sorts of things on there, don't know what they do, sys menu, I don't know CPM at all, this is why I wanted to have a play, <laughs> ah sys menu is not a com is it, this is all basic by the looks of it actually, let's have a look at disk 3 directory, a lot of data, a lot of basic, it looks like a lot of basic programming, programs sorry, it looks like I might have to do a bit of research and maybe create some more, another seven. I'm not sure yet. At least I want to make sure I've got a few Z80 CPM blank disks in the GoTech just in case. Uh, Mallard, that sounds like a program. Is that about ducks? Let's hope so. Maybe it's a duck emulator. Whatever that would be. Bizarre. Ooh, ooh! Mallard 80 Basic. Run only version. 27k, not a CPM disk in A. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you really need two drives of CPM because now I'm going to have to go. Well, I mean, you can do it this way, but I'm going to have to do that again. Okay, a quick look at 5 directory, not start dot. It's the only thing that's a bit confusing jumping between the B. MOS and the um, CPM. Um, I don't know, file one, does that do anything? I really need to get some more CPM software, like some more games and things. So maybe I'll do another video on that. This is more just a quick demo. Yeah, I don't know what that's doing. Crashing, that's what that's doing. But it's nice to have. Uh, yeah, something else coming from the code pros in Raspberry Pi. I think I'll just do directories. So there's a load of stuff on there, I don't know what that is. Graph, stats, printer, table, photo, pattern, all sorts of things. A lot of BBC stuff, I think that's for Z80 BBC basic, I'd imagine. And the last disc, that does have COBOL, let's see if that boots then, before we finish. BDOS error on A, R slash O, don't even know what that means. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much enough, I think, for this video for the time being. But really impressed with the GoTech, thank you Mark, and oh, what I'll do is another video at some point when I've downloaded some genuine CPM software and explored a bit more and I'll also go into the ROM board and how to copy ROMs across in another video because that might be a little bit complicated. You need to get your head round sideways round and ROM which takes a bit of time. Okay and the squirrel's eating all of the nuts I put out for the birds so that's probably a good time for me to end this video. Thank you ever so much for watching, please like and subscribe, I never say that but I thought why not and uh, see you in the next one. Ciao for now, Retro Marky out. Stupid squirrel, ah you're adorable. <laughs>